We want to take you live right now to the TD Garden where Coach Brad Stevens of the Celtics is answering questions about Gordon Hayward. With a, with a statement or a press release. Um, so, yeah, that's the update. You spent time with him today. How was he? How was he doing? Yeah, I was there for a minute last night and then also again today for, for an hour or so. He's, he's down. Um, obviously, you know, there's a physical pain to it, but I think there's also um, doubled by the, the emotional pain of, you know, he put a lot of effort into trying to start this, this career out well uh, in Boston. And, um, but this is a setback. Um, you know, we're expecting a full recovery. Um, and we know there are going to be a lot of tough days ahead on that recovery. But at the same time, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, hopefully he'll improve day to day. But it's been tough. It's been tough on him. Is it a season ending injury? We don't know that stuff yet. And I'm not going to speculate nor put a timeline on it. I, you know, I think after they get, um, they finalize the surgery date and decide um, that, and then they go in there and really evaluate it. Once they do the surgery, then they'll let us know. Did the MRI reveal any other ligament damage? I don't have anything else to add. I'm sorry. Is he at yeah, I don't, and not because I don't want to. I just, I don't, I don't, probably not as up to speed on all of that as I, as maybe a doctor would be. Is he at New England Baptist? Yes. Brad, it seems like there's been a lot of <clears throat> outreach just around the league in the last 24 hours. Did, you know, you talked to Gordon all about that and that you know, helped the spirits all. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, it's helped the spirits quite a bit. I mean, people, you know, I'm sure all of you shared text messages with your friends. Um, people were texting all of us, and certainly he heard from a ton of people, both directly and indirectly, and and he's appreciative of that. I thought both teams yesterday were obviously affected by that. I thought the Cavs organization was top notch and taking care of him while we were there, and and we all appreciated that. Um, and you know, obviously their players and our players were concerned about him. Um, you know, and um, you know he'll continue to need that support as he goes through this. But again, you know. We're expecting this to be a full recovery. Um, you know, no timeline on it, but a full recovery. What's How is the team challenge? morale right now with the guys in the locker room? We've got a game tonight. So um, I think the biggest thing is they really care about um, Gordon. He's made a big impact on them. He's an easy guy to play with. Um, he's a guy you want to play with on both ends of the floor. <laughs> um, so, you know, certainly you miss that um, and that camaraderie. Um, but, you know, one of the tasks that we have now is to pick up steam for him and um, guys that get opportunities that may not have or guys that get opportunities from a more minute standpoint, um, you know, need to be ready to take advantage of those. In a situation like this, do you, you're as a, as a coach, a lot of times seen as a, as a father figure and things like that, how do you handle this? Do you state something once to the team as a group and go on or is it individually? Uh, I talk mostly individually. I mean, I, I think that, you know, you know, as far as talking about um, how he feels and everything else it's more just one-on-one -on -one with him um, but certainly our guys are they're all in contact with him you know whether it's personally or via text or whatever obviously with a back-to-back -back, it's, it's um, not an ideal timing from that standpoint but these guys are pretty tight and they've remained in close contact with him how do you keep the team up I know you have a game tonight but how do you keep them up and not dwell on the fact that they lost one of their all-stars yeah, I mean, I, well, first of all, we know that we've got a long way to go, and we're a team that's going to be growing for a while, um, just merely due to the number of new guys and the amount of youth that we're playing. But I think that the exciting thing for guys are they have an opportunity to step in and and contribute, and you know, and and I think that they want to do so for two reasons. Number one is they want to do so because you know it's an opportunity for them, and number two is they do want to play well for him. And I think that that's something that we all have to we all have to do our jobs as well as we can. Um, it's not an easy thing to do because you're thinking about more important things. But I think that that's you know that's that's part of sports. Fred, what's the, uh, what's the you've got a basketball team, but you know, the as well. I don't I don't do much else, Steve. So like like I don't go out when I get home, and you know. To go out to breakfast, do lunch, and everything else. I'm just either coaching basketball or thinking about the relationships that go with it. So it's just all part of the job. It's all part, one big part of the job. And maybe just, you know, you've got to be thinking basketball and what next, but you've got the what? huge concern for this individual. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the concern for the individual takes precedent. No question about it. 
Um, and then the next thing that'll be that we'll be working through is how are we going to play? Because we do have to make some quick tweaks um, to how we play because he's a obviously a large part of our preseason focus. Who's starting start five for tonight? Marcus Smart will start. Is, is there another layer to this brand? Because I mean, yeah, the players are your players. This is a kid who's living in this side. Yeah, I think you you care about you care about everybody obviously, and you and you want to make sure that everybody um, knows that you care about him. There's no doubt that um, you know, having known him as long as I've known him, um, it's really tough to see him go through this. And um, but he's got a great support network. His wife's great. He's got two great little girls um, that'll bring smiles to his faces regardless of how he feels. And his parents are here, so um, you know, we'll make sure that he knows that. He's, uh, we've got our arms around him. Brad, last night after the game, you had a, seemed like a good conversation with Isaiah. What was that like? Yeah, I usually, I guess I'll keep all those conversations between us, um, but it's always, you know, we've got a great relationship. He's a, a special guy to me um, and uh, to everybody here. And, you know, I think um, getting a chance to see him before the game and then after the game and then Kayla, you know, he was back there with Gordon when Gordon um, was, uh, you know, getting his splint um, because he was back there anyways doing his rehab. So, um, you know, he's a obviously plays for another team, but he's a he's a special guy to us. With, um, obviously, with Marcus moving in the starting lineup now, you become very very young in that second unit. Which, we were young anyway, Scott. Know, exactly. Yeah. So extremely young. How do you um, hope that the guys will fill that? And have you talked to Danny and all about? That well, I think I think that we we will probably look at the roster spot. I mean, we're bringing Jabari Bird back and do, using one of his two-way days today. Um, but I think that that we will at least be actively looking um, for that roster spot, just because you know, obviously the the standpoint of the youth, but also because you know you lose one of your better shooters, um, your more versatile players, um, a guy that can put the ball in the basket for you. So. We'll see how that works itself out. We haven't really gotten into it too much because we got our hands full tonight. Some people thought some people thought that Crowder might got in the way, uh, maybe should have done better to get out of the way. Do you, you see any problem with that? You know what? I haven't rewatched it. I don't really have any interest in rewatching it just because of the fall. But I didn't think that at all when I was watching it live. I mean, I thought that LeBron actually read read the play, jumped up, deflected the pass, and it was just an unfortunate, awkward landing. That's. That was nobody's, there was no ill will, no fault, nothing. That was just a unique landing from what I saw. So the headline from Celtics head coach Brad Stevens that the Celtics organization and Gordon Hayward being very cautious here assessing his options. Uh, surgery will happen soon but is not scheduled as of yet. Broken tibia, dislocated ankle, but they do say this is the good news, full recovery at some point for Gordon Hayward. We just don't know the timetable.